Long Island residents are picking up their paintbrushes and designing a new image for Patchogue Village. It's all part of an effort to show that the South Shore Long Island community of 12,000 residents can begin a new chapter in its over 100-year-old history. In the 1980s, Patchogue was a model of urban decay, marred with empty storefronts. As recently as 1996, the business vacancy rate was as high as 20% downtown. And then, everything started to change. We came to Patchogue just at the right time because it's going through this revitalization and we feel like we're, we're part of it. Patchogue's renaissance began in 1998, when the town renovated the 75-year-old Patchogue Theater for the Performing Arts. Since the reopening, yearly attendance at the theater has doubled. We want to make something good happen in our town, so we've come out and made it happen. Patchogue Arts Council Vice President John Sino is just one of dozens of local artists working to remake the town. The $18 million art space Patchogue Lofts are the latest example of their efforts. So art space wasn't just about giving housing, affordable housing to artists. It was a catalyst for change. It has national recognition for doing what it does. It brings that national spotlight on the little village of Patchogue. The 45-unit art space Patchogue Lofts are home to more than three dozen artists and their families. You know, it's always percolating and always bubbling and different things are happening all the time. Dan Wooster and his wife Jasmine decided to move from Los Angeles to Patchogue in 2011 after getting job offers to work at a local gallery. It was kind of a, a culture shock, to be honest with you, moving here. We didn't have any idea what we were coming to, really. So it was kind of a leap off a cliff. And we didn't know anybody. Um, the whole job scene was like started to be shaky practically from the first week, which we were really surprised about. Aside from steadily decreasing vacancy rates downtown and a growing population of young families, an added emphasis on the arts is also helping to bridge the gap between the Hispanic and white communities in Patchogue. In 2008, Ecuadorian immigrant Marcelo Lucero was stabbed to death near the Patchogue train station by a group of white attackers. Since then, efforts to bring the community together have been an overarching goal. I think that what's different here now is that people are willing to let other people in and they're willing to see the change. They're not so afraid. Former English professor and playwright Howard Beckerman and his wife Linda have used their company, Worldwide Voices, to help bring together different ethnicities through a common love of the arts. We have found ourselves in a community that really is perfect for the mission of Worldwide Voices, and because there's about 35% uh, Hispanics in Patchogue. One of the things we are hoping to accomplish is to find ways to get these two communities to collaborate in the arts. And while some residents are working to build better relationships, other groups are continuing to build new homes and businesses in Patchogue. When it's finished in three years, the new Village at Patchogue project will house 200 more residents and have outdoor performance space for artists and musicians. Like Patchogue itself, it just needs the right coat of paint. For Stony Brook News, I'm Mike Costanelli.